All right, here we go. Overdrive off and running TSN 1050 on the TSN app and your home smart speaker, a little Creed to bring us in. <laughs> and I'm not sure I could get much higher than I currently am right now. And, of course, I mean that figuratively because this is a professional program, but my Packers rolled this afternoon. Man, did they look good, and that's a win for Team Hazen, bro. I'm rocking the hat. I will be rocking it all afternoon. <laughs> Look at this. It's great. You I'm are on fire. Great. What is the record for just when, when Al's brother with Chevy guy came bombing through the, the door? What have you guys done since then? Are you 4-0? and Yeah, our personal picks are 3-0, and I believe. <laughs> and uh, obviously they had the game this afternoon. They were on the Lions. They were adamant the Lions were going to roll. And uh, they laid a lot of points, you guys, 7.5. And, and not only did they not cover, the they Lions lost, lost on out. Thanksgiving. That is yeah. the seventh straight loss on Thanksgiving for the Lions. Wow. I'll tell you what, my partsy, former NFL guy, he needs a kick in the ass. I'm sorry. <laughs> he is doing weird things now. He's in a weird headspace, and he's doing weird things. Oh, and he oh, damn oh. owes me an apology for what's there's been going cracks. on the last there's couple some weeks. There's cracks. I've no, there's not cracks. cracks. I love the guy. I'll always support him. But you know the gif? I'm the captain now. Mm -hmm. I might have to jump in and start taking more of a leadership role. Wow. Well, more of a leadership role. I'll tell you what, my partner, he will be joining us in about an hour. Noodles, he supplied information. <laughs> Tremendous either information. Either late last night or earlier this morning that Would is stop literally <laughs> not of this earth. Okay, really? literally not of this earth. And I'll explain that in about an hour. In fact, I'll allow Alex's brother to explain why the Packers were locked today based on information he was picking up that uh, is – scientific in nature and accurate in the end. But uh, as for the afternoon game, we're not on TV today because obviously the NFL has taken over. You got Cowboys commanders. We're on the Cowboys. I think we're laying 12 and a half. It's a big number. But uh, you got that game. You got a Thursday nighter tonight. The Seahawks are at home against the San Francisco 49ers. And it's all Hang NFL all day Hang today. Hang on a sec. Yeah. Isn't there like five channels? They couldn't have squeezed this in anywhere. No. You can't. It's everywhere. <laughs> I mean, there, there's football everywhere. And then I guess I'm, I'm assuming Sports Center's coming up. I would think. I don't know that for sure. But those, uh, are, those are regional channels, though. You you know that. How many tweets do we get? Again, five channels can't put you. Those are, there's regional channels. Then there's a national channel, like right. the, which we are usually on at six o'clock. Like that's you have to explain this to people. And I don't. I, I refuse to to go through it. But the bottom line is, is yes, we're not on. But the NFL is in full flight. This is their day, correct? This is, Hayes, this massive is their day. day right? Massive day. And again, the Lions have been there kicking off at 1230 for 86 years. And this is what we've seen like 80 times, right? This is the performance they had today. Jared Goff, <laughs> three lost fumbles. One goes for a fumble six. Jo uh, Jordan Love looked incredible this afternoon. you got to give him credit. He looked yeah. great There today. was a few tweets saying Jordan Love breakout game yes Whoa. that's exactly what it was i mean you know down in the u.s there's like 40 million Dude, people watching that stop game. it with this you know how that league works next week he could be no he trash. played well last week he played well the week before they're so, in this hunt man i'm kidding. telling you they're again they're, they got kansas city next week and then they got the giants the bucks carolina they got the bears like they yeah. could actually go on a run here they and get to pathway. nine and eight ten or seven ten and seven and possibly get in the packers are alive and the Lions will be fine. They'll dust themselves off. But ever since they went to Baltimore a few weeks ago and got spanked, they have not played well. That defense has been terrible. Um, and we saw that earlier today. So Packers look good. The Lions did not. The Lions have lost seven in a row. Wow. U.S. Thanksgiving, which is a wild stat, but somewhat predictable because of Why the history. Why did my party just literally look at that, forget anything it, else on the docket, and it, just say they don't win on Thanksgiving? He's got no gut instinct. That's the point. There's no gut instinct, man. You need tremendous information plus gut instinct. That's the role you're supposed to play. You're, you're the gut instinct but guy. Dude, what do you, you don't think I had gut instinct on the Chargers versus the Jets, and he just blows it off. Yep. He That's doesn't right. let me communicate. I feel like I'm in a wow. bad relationship. There it, you better there step it is. up, man. There it is. Here. You better so what's the overall? Plus three? 
Yes, you guys are you guys are only plus three. Al's brother and I are absolutely humming right now, and we're on the Cowboys. And then tonight, I could see a Seahawk backdoor cover, and we are going to pick tomorrow's game. We could be by tomorrow even six Steven. thirty, even Stephen going wow. into the weekend. That is legitimately in front of us. So Luke That's Wilson what's on the docket. Wow. That is on the docket. Luke Wilson in about an hour. Al's brother, famously of Hayes and Bro, will also join us. In were we once hour. plus seven? Yes, at one point yes. you were plus eight, I believe. At one well, point, well, it was eight, but they got reset to seven because they got they got a little horny on the that's on right. the counting. But it was Th- that's right for sure. It was plus seven for sure, mm-hmm. and you know, Hazy was in a dark place. Like there was things you weren't seeing the board, you weren't feeling it, and you got some greasy. Wasn't we're there the a Leafs couple like with Randy some, Carlisle, man? Well, right. you know, but it was, some uh, weird pushes, some weird backdoor yeah, covers. That's what, you had a backdoor cover that was ridiculous. Yeah. You were really like, okay, ridiculous. Like, yeah, so and, that's what and it I was. needed a spark, and I found my spark, and my spark is Al's brother, there and uh, it's outstanding. Everything is moving and shaking, and um, so yeah, we've got that coming up. Mark Masters will join us later in the hour because you know there's some Leaf news. The Leafs just feels like they've been off. For a month and a half, yeah, like those insane. those Swedish games don't even feel like real games. I, I know they happen, but two o'clock on a Friday and then eight a.m. on a Sunday, um, out of sight, out of mind. They don't even play at home tomorrow. They're in Chicago, uh, two p.m. start on TSN Radio on TSN Four. A game you should get right. Chicago's dealing with some turmoil. There's something weird going on with Corey Perry. He's just not with the team. They're not. They're not. No one's explaining what's happening, but he's not with them. Taylor Hall has been shut down for the year with a knee injury, so he's out. Uh, Chicago is who we thought they would be. They're a you know, bottom three, bottom five team in the league. But the Leafs, you know, they're dealing with their own stuff right now. John Klingberg placed on long-term IR. Saw that coming, didn't we? Everyone saw that coming, right? Like, everyone knew he's banged up. It's just a matter of time. I, I, I think most people, the spidey senses are going off. Does, does this mean he's done for the year? Seems like it could be very likely. Like he might need surgery, and they might shut him down for the year, or it's a Robot Island situation. Um, but it does it possibly coincide with a trade? <laughs> what right? does that like, mean? Are they pull the trigger on a what deal? what does the Robot Island mean? Does it mean they just said you're hurt and you're not playing? Or I don't understand when. Well, they have say a history. It. Like, listen, it's not that guys haven't had injury history or something, you know, surgery or rehab. But with Matt Murray at the end of the year. Everyone concluded he will never play for the Leafs again. Like, it will not be an issue, right? That, that cap hit will not be a problem. And he had surgery. He's not going to play again. It won't be a problem. John Klingberg really was struggling. If he was playing great, I think they'd be holding their breath that he could return. I don't think that's the case here because of the way he had been playing earlier in the season. But Joffrey Looper, remember he showed up day one at camp. Nazem Kadri's like, this guy's in the best <laughs> shape of am- anyone on earth. Amazing. He's flying out there. Flying out flying. there. The next day, oh, he'll never play again. No, but that, remember, Meyer. Kadri had to walk his comments back. Yeah. We were talking about it on the show. Kadri, I I think he overstepped his boundaries because he probably went for dinner with him. And he's like, yeah, this guy looks amazing. And then the next day, they <laughs> failed physical. Go away. We'll pay you $5.8 million, whatever it was, whatever mm-hmm. he had left on his deal. That's the thing of the beauty of being – a wealthy organization and using the CBA to your advantage. If you, you know, and, and, and I'm not challenging the inju- injury. He's hurt. He is hurt. But he is. But it's, you know, Robita Island. I swear to God, I am I wrong? Did we not help create that? We term? created that personally. I, 100% I've heard it, we did. I've heard it throughout the league. Yeah. Like throughout the, I'll be in like Arizona talking to somebody. They're like, yeah, they might have to Robita Island that guy. And I'm like, mm-hmm. that is, I swear to God, that's our term from our show. One hundred percent. And what was wild about Stefan Robida is remember he just kind of went to Quebec and disappeared. He was coaching his son. Yeah. Then all of a sudden he was coaching. Like it was like <laughs> no one could find this guy. CTV <laughs> News was trying to track him down. It was like you can't find him. He He's was in Kaiser witness Soze. protection. He was in witness protection. Yes. Lou put him in witness protection. He was <laughs> gone and he was getting paid and it wasn't going to count against the cab and everything was all good. And then all of a sudden a press release like a year and a half later he was on the staff. They're like, yeah, yeah Robidoux's a scout now. He works here. Uh, it was it was wild, and I kind of sense that will happen with Klingberg. Um, but at a minimum, he goes on long-term IR. He wasn't going to play anytime soon anyway. And, you know, listen, he, he hadn't been playing well, but the hope was this guy could find his his Dallas form and help this team. 
And in the end, that's not the case. So, so one of you explain this, because everybody that's driving around in their car or listening, they want to know, what does this mean financially as far as getting a defenseman? Well, this $4.1 million is now available, available to until them. he returns. But if he doesn't return, then ostensibly that will be available, I believe, for the rest of the year, right? So um, it clears up space. Like, they have 23 guys in Chicago. They can actually bring a full roster for the first time all year because they have some room here. They've called yeah. up Alex Steves, who's been playing really well with the Marlies. He's a forward. Um, I think Timmons will likely make his debut tomorrow. But it opens up some flexibility. Right. And ultimately, that's what Leaf fans, I think, are hoping for. And I'm sure management is looking for as well if they're going to pull the trigger on a deal. And, you know, when that happens – is anybody's guess, but I think we all expect that it will happen at some point. Like, the Maple Leafs are going to acquire at least one defenseman, if right. not multiple D-men, between now and the trade deadline. Now, the deadline is March 8th, right? It's it's not like they're in a hurry to do this. I think they can survive with this defense core. What are they, 10-5-2? They're, they're in a good spot. Right. Um, but at some point, if that money is freed up, all of a sudden – Maybe you don't need the other team to eat as much money as you would have needed to in the past, which costs you even more to acquire that guy. Right. So that could be what's you know in store sooner than later. We'll see. But uh, Leafs in action again in Chicago tomorrow. Finally. Yes, yeah. finally, finally. And, um, you know, as for the other Canadian teams, I uh, I don't know what to Jesus, say anymore man. about the Oilers. I, I really don't. I, was, because I got I to say this one thing. And I understand you've got to show up and have a response. But I was almost offended at the third period when everyone was hustling and getting to pucks. I'm like, oh, really? You want to you wanna show up for the third when you're down four? They actually got it to a point where it was a bit of a game. But they were so bad. The first period might have been their worst period of the year. Like They were playing with their sticks upside down. It was it was embarrassing. Yeah, it is. It was and awful. Yeah, right. like it, I, right. I'm just like, oh, okay, guys. Like it's Oilers. You got to get a win. How many? I, do they have more games on this road trip, or are they heading home? Yeah, now? they're washed tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Oh, washed wash tomorrow. And, and so it's like, okay, and... it's been a negative road trip. Get on the positive. Come out like urgency, intensity, all that stuff. And they were so bad. It looked like they just didn't give a rat's ass. And I understand to struggle in that league, man. Sometimes it's just garbage. You go through some terrible times. But it's like, really? What are you expecting to happen when you go out and play like that? And then in the third period, you busted your ass? Why didn't you bust your ass to start the – like the urgency in the third period was mandatory when the puck dropped. That's what's scary. Yeah, Yeah, that is scary, man. And it it looks like they're going to Peter Horacek, that guy behind the bench, where it's just like, nah, I'll I'll do whatever. Yeah, that's concerning as well. The thing is that you can't do that here. Like I was thinking about it in a different way too. Whether McDavid's a part of the Knobloch, you know, Hiring whatever the Wood Woodcroft sounds like it caught them all off guard. The firing, all they did is shine a light and put more pressure on McDavid because you know he has a history with that that coach. He has a history with the president. He has like now he's carrying the weight of the world on his shoulders. And and listen, like oh I you've been banging this drum for a while. I'm not going to argue with you. I saw a stat this morning. Correct me if I'm wrong. If it was said on the broadcast last night or not, but. Their save percentage is for through 18 games in the last 25 years, the second worst mm-hmm. in the last 25 years. Did you hear that stat? Did, or, I did, did not hear that, but it's it's like collectively like 86 percent or something. Right. Like it, that. It's and, and it's awful. listen, they need a goalie. I get it. I don't. But that what you were talking about that first period. They're playing with their sticks turned over. It doesn't matter if the goalie stands. If that's yeah. Vasilevsky, they're still allowing goals because it's the 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 urgency's not there. You guys are talking. You know, we had our group chat. Like, I something's going on in Chicago. I wonder if because Morazic was held out of practice. I wonder if Perry and Morazic are part of something. You know, I, I was thinking about that outside. Yeah. Like, the, because they got to do something there. Like, they, you, you know, you've got the coach. Yeah, you did the coach already. Um, you know, you 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 waved Campbell. 
you got to do something else to, to jar that room and, and get somebody back to life there because it's you know they're dying on the vine. It's wild, man. Like the yep. Oilers are five, twelve, and one. They're ten points out of the playoffs. It's November twenty third. Yeah, yeah. And like that. And I've always given them the benefit of the doubt, Hayes. Like they're just gonna get over this. But I I watched that last night, especially after the first period, and I was like, maybe that's curtains on the whole thing. I I listen. If you if you take the nameplates off the back. And forget that the league existed prior to this season, and you just watched 18 games. You'd say that's one of the five worst teams in the league. Like that's where they, they deserve like to be. It. That's they what I'm saying. Like They're it. playing like like you'd have no idea. I know McDavid's probably banged up. That's not Connor McDavid, man. That's not even close. Leon Drysaddle, not even close. And then it filters down from there. And mm-hmm. I think it is such an indictment. Two different things stick out based on what happened last night. You mentioned oh the third period. That reminds me of teams that have an awful 70 games and they're statistically out of the playoffs. And then the last 12, they go 8, 2, and 2. And you're like, wow, there it is. And it's like, no, there it isn't. Those, that doesn't mean anything. Yeah. It means nothing. If anything, what that says is the pressure is getting to you so much that once it's fully alleviated, you actually can perform. And guess right. what? The pressure is only going to pick up. Because Knobloch said it after the game. He's like, yeah, we had nothing to lose in the third. So that's yeah. why they performed well. You'd and think you at some point that, that mentality would apply in the first. Well, you you gotta... just mentioned something that's so that's so weird to have it on the same team during a struggle. Usually it's like, okay, McDavid's in a bit of a slump right now. But for him to be not close to where he is, and although he's battling an injury, we'll give him a hall pass – and Dreisaitl, the second best player in the world, to be not even close. Some de- like Ekholm last year was a stud. It's almost like he shored up that whole decor on his own. He's not really close, although he did nah. score last night. Yeah. Bouchard and Nurse, and then goaltenders to literally not go out with their equipment on is insane yeah, in one bad. season. None of them are close. You just yeah, said it's it. brutal. None of them are close to scratching the surface of what they're capable of consistently. Zach Hyman's got 10 goals. But you know what? Five of them are in their last three games. Like, you know, he had a slow start. He's getting it going. But Nuge is another them, guy, Jamie. He had 100-plus points last year, and he's it's a not, ghost He out looks there. in third gear. Like, the, the whole group is off. And you've got to find something if you want to – it, not even, if you want to make the playoffs, you got to find something to galvanize you and get going. And that was supposed to be the coach, though. Like, and yeah. what, all this is exposed is that Jay Woodcroft had nothing to do with any of this. No kidding. For them to go out and play like that in the first period, after a, you're looking for a coach bump and to be re-energized and no. everybody be motoring out there. Well, that was so not, far off from what's necessary at that level to come up with a win. That one goal where Kulak, Kulak had a, kind of his stick. And there was like five guys standing around in front of the net. And Cash I think Natchez just, just oh, like banged. Sorry, yeah. I was like, that's embarrassing, man. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's just embarrassing. Yeah. No, it, it, it's not good enough. And, and the, the, what, if you look at it, I don't know who's calling the shots there. The guy don't think, like, everyone wants to, you know, fire darts at Ken Holland. Ken Holland is a pretty patient manager. He's a guy who, He's it's not a good look, though, Noodles. It's I not a think, good look. Man. I don't think he's calling the shots, though. What okay, is a good but that look? Sta- that started a month ago. What's like, not a what good I mean? look? Y- yeah. What, yeah. What do you mean that that the knob lock hiring? Like, from what? Oh, me saying it's not a good look. Yeah. I'm what saying, do you? What is not a good yeah, look? What he's built. Oh. That came into the season with Jack Campbell and Stuart Skinner. That wasn't uh, Jeff Jackson. The guy gave Darnell Nurse. What did he give him? Like Cody Cece's a top four defenseman. He paid him big money. Gave him term. You know, yeah, like I mean, he's had some wins there too. R and H had 100 points at five million. Zach Hyman, he had well, no, he, Evander he's, Kane's deal. Like he's had some pretty good. Like, the thing is, guys, he, I think he the crazy thing Nugent about Hopkins what we're talking million. about more than that. Give the same, more than that. the same group of guys we're breaking Nugent down Hopkins right now. Makes five million a year, doesn't he? He makes five million. Oh, yes. I thought he signed an eight-year deal at more than that. Okay. No, he makes five. But anyways, I, that, 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 we're right. splitting hairs. The same players, is, all that they had looked like they had a chance to win against Vegas last year. You know what I mean? Like, how did it all go so wrong? Especially at the beginning of the year when McDavid sent the boys a note and said, let's get in here two weeks early. Right. It's almost like during that time, something was revealed, or I don't know what the hell it was behind the scenes, but I don't know how it all could have went up and smoked like that. Everyone together. It's, it's beyond me. I well, don't know if something like that happened. They've got to find answers. And, and the thing is, is, you know, Hayes, what you were pointing out, this isn't Jay Woodcroft's 
you know, no. crossed the bed. And like, I don't. This I'm not coaching. convinced that that was Holland that fired him. I, I think that that's was what I mean. that's pretty where clear I was... that Jackson was a guy. He wanted Knobloch, and Knobloch was his guy. But right. I, I mean, listen, I. You talk to someone, anyone in Edmonton, there, aren't, there isn't a lot of support for Ken Holland right now. No, like, I, let's call I get it. it. Is. I, mean, I get it. I, and he's on. He's a lame duck GM on the last year of his deal. Yeah. But I, my whole thing is, is like, I, I would love to know who's calling the shots because who's making, you know, that it seems like there's a lot of cooks in the kitchen there and everybody's got their own opinion. Sure. And then if you're in the ear of the, the owner and all of a sudden, hey, I'm on the bench. I'm Paul Coffrey. I'm an advisor. Now I'm on the bench. Like, you know, it, it doesn't. Yeah. To me, I hear what you're I saying just, there. I, I'm not that, disagreeing you on uh, with that on that front. I guess there's blood. There's blood on a lot of hands. I'm just saying to, to suggest that Ken Holland is immune from criticism. I, I think. Oh is no, no, I, I wasn't going far, I, I w- far from the truth. But yeah. yes, there, there's a lot of different cooks in the kitchen. That is their history. There's no question. You got an owner that's unstable out there in terms of the way he operates. Um, and as I've said, we've all collectively said and thought, like, what is at risk here? Is is one of the biggest most wasted seasons in NHL history. I don't think that's hyperbole. You have a guy who came off 153 points and 64 goals last year, the clear-cut best player in the world. They missed the playoffs. Like, it's – I was thinking this morning, This is, and admittedly this is going possibly a little bit too far, but if you're the GM of the World Hockey Championships, are you thinking, I'm going to call this guy in April? Like he might be playing at the World Ch- no, Hockey he's Championships. Not. He's not, he would never they missed the was... playoffs. You got to send him a text. You up? Yeah, you want to come? Yeah. What do you think? Any interest? Any I mean, thoughts? That's, that's legitimately I, I, where it's at. Germany's I, I, like, man, Drysdale might actually be here this year. I, I, this is I wild still stuff. Think, I still think they can make the playoffs. They can. Just, they can. And every yeah. individual game is not where it ends. But right. in ten game spurts is where you take a step back and you say, "Wow, wow, I agree." And like it, it just to me they they look awful. Like something yeah. has to jar that group. Noodles, they can like, make the playoffs because you can never count those guys out. But that first period seemed like it was one of the first nails in the coffin, like awful. for real, real, like awful. Where you said, yeah. "Okay, this is what you guys want to do." You're you're at the beginning of the end. That's what that first period felt like to me. Well, where yeah. if it continues through five more games, then it's really game over. Like and the odds, they can make the playoffs, as we all three just said, but they are going to have to play out of their ass to get there. Yes. Well, they have to play. Like the thing is, is I would ask this, and I, I don't know who brought it up. Was it Johnny or a couple of days ago? Like, I don't know if '97 should be absolved of criticism or '29. No. Like they're not playing. I, they're well, awful like, right now, based on yeah. their standards. Their standard and, I get it. Connor. Set. Connor says he's hurt, or he doesn't he's say playing. he's hurt. But everything. Yeah, you know it. You know the deal, man. Yep. Jersey on, hundred percent. So and, what do you got? And it starts at the top. We we say I I say it a million times. It's a star driven league. You know, you can ask Derek Ryan to play harder, play a little tougher. But Derek Ryan isn't the guy who's dragging them out of this. If they no. dra- if they come out, it's McDavid. It's Dreisaitl, it's Hyman, it's going to be Kane, it's going to be Ekholm, it's going to be Nurse, and it's going to be somebody who stops a puck. That's really what it is. It, yeah. It's going to be that group as a collective group and saying, "I'm, you know, we're not doing this anymore. We're we're going to." But it's to a man. There's not a guy now. Fogel's dropped off. Kane's dropped off. There's not a guy playing to their potential there. Not one. I'm pretty sure that they kept McDavid and Dreisaitl from doing media post game last night too. Which is a real sign of what's going on, like, dude. I don't blame him though, man. No, Every I, I don't single either. Night, captain or not captain, like that's enough. Because it's going to be the same stuff. It's going to be the same question every single day, and as we've been saying, every loss, every game, McDavid ages like a full year. The guy, he looks like he's in his mid forties, the way he's <laughs> operating right now. What do but, you think McDavid would have said last night if Spec asked him the same question again? Should you try to win this one 4 1? Is it better to try ask, to win 4 1 or 7 1? Honest to God, now, like, <laughs> you know what? Like, you, what do you say? What, like, all they want to do is win. Go, go they around the table. Less if it's 1 0 or 10 9. But right. my, my point is that is an organizational thing where they probably talked about it even before the game. The PR, they're like, if we lose again, we can't send them out. Like, wow. we've, got, we've got to have a plan here because the media is dying to get in here. But what, like what dying? Go around the the table here. If you're in the scrum last night, legitimately, and whoever say 97s there, what, what would you ask him 
like legitimately, not trying to poke a bear or whatever. Like, is there one well, question? Well, I would have said, me? how far away do you guys think you are from rock bottom and understanding that pl- missing the playoffs is a real possibility? That's yeah. a journalistic question. I, I think there's there's two ways to look to answer that, Noodles. Am I coming in without being around the team at all? Or have I been there the whole time? Because right, are you like a master's type? Of yeah, thing? yeah, like because that's okay. the thing. The reporters that are there, they've been asking that question probably for a month. Right, you know. Right. So, is there anything original? I, I I don't know. I mean, based there probably would be within the merits of the game. Right. But I think if you had a if you could do a truth serum thing, you know, it's yeah, it's probably like how close are you from rock bottom? How far away are you from reaching your potential? How do you explain the first thirty minutes of that? Yeah. The first twenty minutes of that hockey game. I probably ask what since the coaching change have you improved in any area? Yeah, like, can you give question. us an example of one thing you're doing better? Um, yeah, I don't know. I one, like I would, I my my question would be: Is there one thing? Because if there, if you look at it, there might be ten things that are broken right now. Is there one thing that you could start with? And, and I don't know if it, it would be individually or as a team. Give me one thing that you guys know that you can be better at the in th- the next the, game. The one answer, thing I would start with is I'd put a different guy in net. Yeah, it'd probably be saves. That's the thing, yep, but they're never going to say they're that. They're not going to the say that. They're not going to say no, that. No, they're not going to. That's that's the thing. Like, what are they really going to say? What do they really think? Probably two different things. Fair uh, enough. All right, Leafs in Chicago tomorrow. Mark Masters will join us. Get his take on on the Leafs going into that game. Luke Wilson coming up. We're tracking the Cowboys Commanders after the Packers laid a beating. On the Lions and Team Owen Wilson earlier this afternoon. Team and Owen we have Wilson. a new hero in pro sports. The hero <laughs> we've all been waiting for. We all needed this guy. The heroic Greg Popovich. We'll play the clip and get into it a little bit later this afternoon. Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 and on the TSN app. Overdrive continues, brought to you by FanDuel. Bringing you everything from the opening line to the final score. Luke Wilson, Al's brother, in about a half an hour. Bruce Boudreaux coming up later this afternoon as well. We'll get Bruce's take on on where the Leafs are at. U.S. Thanksgiving, right? We always use this as a a mark in the schedule. Where are you at? U.S. Thanksgiving. Are you for real? Are you fraudulent? Um, There's a stat, Hazy. It's like 79 point something percent. If you're in right now, you Mm -hmm. generally get in. And if not... You're trouble. pretty much screwed, yeah. Yep, trouble. One in five can still make it in. But it's not only Edmonton. New Jersey's in big trouble right now. Yeah, they like suck they, right they now. They really are losing a lot of hockey games. And they were supposed to be fighting for the you know best team in the East mm-hmm. and have that level of talent. Uh, so it's not only Edmonton, Jersey, other teams. But uh, the Leafs are, again, in action tomorrow in Chicago. Feels like it's been a while. And to try to set the scene on that game, here's our good buddy Maple Leaf reporter, Mark Masters. Uh, historically, what's the uh, what's the trivia scene like in Chicago, Mark? <laughs> Chicago is a great trivia city, one of the greats, I think, in the United States. So, <laughs> eager to get there on my way to the airport, and we'll see if I can't find a, a trivia game tonight. Yes, U.S. Thanksgiving trivia. I'm sure it will be <laughs> bananas down there tonight. Um, it feels like an eternity since they played, and I obviously they had those two regular season games in Sweden, but they felt like exhibition games. Um, mm-hmm. What's the does the mood of the team like? How would you describe it going in to uh, a game back in North America tomorrow? Yeah, they're they're eager to get back in. They're just a rhythm, right? It feels like they've just been. Honestly, it felt like it's been a month since they've been like playing a regular schedule here. So, uh, yeah, you definitely sense that the guys are about ready. I mean, there's been some 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 practice uh, flare ups here. You know, uh, Kelly Yarncroak takes a shot from Austin Matthews yesterday. Doesn't practice today, uh, and is questionable for tomorrow. And then today, Marner got hit by a puck from Riley. Uh, seemed to be upset about it for a moment there. Like they're they're ready to play another team and and, and see other pucks and other jerseys on the other side to just get back into a swing of things so got it back to back uh this week and go from there masters do you have any additional info re the klingberg situation not really i mean obviously uh, what we know is ltir and chris johnston and i did a hit from the rink today and they have he said he's reporting they haven't decided figured out whether or not surgery is needed so it's not like we know long term that they that he's done for the year and they can use that cap space but it really helps them out of a jam, certainly for, for this game, because 
when we talked to Sheldon Keith, there was a lot of hemming and hawing over, over whether, you know, Connor Tim's, Timmins just watching practice is clearly ready to go. Uh, but can you activate him if you don't have Klingberg on LTIR? No. And then all of a sudden now Yarn Croak, you know, it's a minor injury, but he might not be able to play. So, they, you know, is that force Ryan Reeves back in? Now with Klingberg on LTIR, Timmins can play. Alex Steves, who's off to a great start with the Marlies, 11 goals in 14 games gets called up. You, you know, today at practice they had Noah Gregor taking Yarn Croak's spot on the third line, and Reeves was in the fourth line spot. Now you could keep Gregor on the fourth line if you like how that line's been going. Put Steves maybe uh, into that third spot, and then you can also you you have the flexibility to make changes on the second half of a back to back as well. So uh, it gives them in the short term a lot of flexibility, and then you just have to wait and see wh- where things go from here with Klingberg. And it sounds obviously serious. It is serious. And something he's been dealing with uh, for a while is what we know. With Mark Masters, our Maple Leaf reporter leaves Chicago tomorrow on TSN 4 and right here on TSN Radio. Then the Leafs are off to Pittsburgh with a little rendezvous with their old buddy Kyle Dubas for the first time this year. And and I'm, I'm curious what you would anticipate Dubas to be doing on Saturday. The game is in Pittsburgh. Do you think he'll meet with the media? Um, do you think he'll run from that? I mean, and how much of... How much of that story still has life now that we're well into a new season? I, I feel like his return to Toronto maybe will be a bigger deal with both teams playing a back-to-back this weekend, so both playing Friday uh, in a different city than Pittsburgh. I'm not sure there's going to be even anything at the rink on Saturday morning. I don't, I don't anticipate him doing any interviews about it, um, so I imagine it'll be all quiet on that front. I know some of the Leafs players have been asked about him a little bit, uh, it just, you know, by some of the scribes just off camera trying to kind of lead into the, the Saturday. Yeah, it's always tough to, to, to play up games from a general manager's perspective. I know we tried a bit when Trey Living was playing, the Leafs were playing the Flames, just he had such a connection to players on both sides, and it will be a similar feel with, with Dubas uh, having such connections to, to both sides here. So I don't, I, I don't know if it, I, if I, I can't, I don't, I'm not sure how he'll end up being covered when it comes to that Saturday game because of the back-to-back and because he's not going to do many interviews, but certainly it's going to loom over that game. There's no, there's no doubt about it. Mark, how has Brian Reeves been? I know he's like the kind of the class clown guy. He loves joking around. He's the guy at Halloween that likes popping out of the cardboard box. It's kind of like soured as far as him even getting into the lineup. How was his whole like approach in the locker room has it all changed? Have you seen a change in him? I haven't noticed. I, I, I don't know how he was in Sweden, so I can't speak to that. I asked Sheldon Keith about him today, and he said he's handled it well. He understands that things have been going well for the team, so obviously they want to stick with kind of what's been working for them. Uh, but I can't, I can't imagine. I, I'm not sure, but I would just think human nature, it's harder to be a, a, a big voice when you're not playing. I just think back to when Colby Armstrong and Mike Komisarek, uh back in my early days on the beat, you know, they, they were guys who were supposed to be leaders, but they, they would tell you it's hard to, to lead and, and be a voice and be a personality when you're not playing or you're playing and it's not going well. Reeves is kind of a bit of a unique guy because I don't know if he was brought in for, for how he plays necessarily. He was brought in for the personality of it. And uh, it was, you know, obviously he sits out that first game, they have two fights. Uh, and stand up for each other. They liked how, how that went. So um, perhaps he helped in terms of what happened with the Lilligren Marchand incident, and they had the meeting, and he's been pushing them in that regard. But I don't know. It's, I haven't talked to him. I haven't had a chance to talk to him since he's been out of the lineup. But uh, I'm sure it's not easy this early into a three-year deal. Mark, who, have they laid out who's starting tomorrow and then who's going to go in the back-to-back? Yeah, Samsonov goes tomorrow. Joseph Wool goes Saturday. Um, so they're sticking kind of with what the rotation has been. Uh, what, you know, Samson had the first game. It's, it's, it's got to be tough for a goalie, right? The team has only played twice in 12 days, but both goalies have only played one. So I'll be intrigued to see kind of how things look for Samson tomorrow afternoon. It's not a usual game day. I know just, just this season with how things have been going for him, he's liked to do the morning skate and have kind of that routine. So he won't have that tomorrow. I won't imagine. I can't imagine with the 1 PM local start. So, that will be an intriguing spot, and then Joseph Wool will get his first look at Crosby and Malkin, which is always special for a young player on Saturday. But that's what they're going. Samsonov's got a couple wins in a row, and it feels like Wool has kind of settled down after they given up the sixth spot to the Senators. So it's kind of gone quiet a little bit with the least crease around the team right now. 
All right, Mark. Safe travels. Good luck with trivia tonight, and we'll do it again soon. Forget trivia. i got to find a restaurant that's open. It's pretty quiet there on uh, Thanksgiving Day in the, in the United States, but I'll figure something out. All right, buddy. You're, you're the Thanks, best guys. at it. You'll figure it out. There he is, <laughs> Mark Masters, our Maple Leaf reporter. And I think he's that's an accurate assessment. Like the goaltending conversation is very quiet. I think that's a good thing. Yeah. Right? That's yeah. a positive in Toronto. Is well, there any goalie in the league that – has played back to back. Like, does anyone do it other than like Hellebuck. coming down the stretch and and needing a win? Hellebuck I, did it. He's done it in the season so far, I believe. Like, you look at he's just a guy who's a workhorse and he's fine. Like, he's economical on the net, and I think he likes to play. And, good, good. You know, like it just it it used to be. I mean, I, the game's different. I remember talking to Roberto Luongo about it. You know, asking you know near the end of his career what it was compared to what the beginning of his career. And he said with the, the play being so much faster in tight, the side-to-side motion, all of that type of stuff, it, it wears on you a lot more. Like even you may only face 25 shots, 30 shots or whatever, but because everything is so fast and you're up, down, over, it, yeah. it, it's tougher to recover. I so guess that's in like, the Jersey trap days noodles, there was like so much play in the neutral zone and like dump it in and then dump yeah. it out. And maybe there wasn't as much swarming the net or activity because of the hooking and holding. Uh, maybe it is a harder gig, but I don't know if the goaltenders – like, is there any goaltender that's unhappy that, that's just like, man, I need to just play back-to-back? Probably not. I mean I, – I think now it's it's come to a point – like pitchers, you know, there are pitchers that want to go through the six innings, right? Or if they're on, if they're rolling, if a goalie's rolling, why wouldn't you, hey, you can play tomorrow night. You only had 26 shots tonight. You're good to go tomorrow. If the travel's short, like, you know, Chicago to Pittsburgh isn't that far, but you lose an hour, but it's an afternoon game. So you could probably go back to back if you had to tomorrow, but that's not the way that the Leafs goalies are set up. Like mm. neither one of them are standalone ones right now. I think Wall has a chance to be. Right, you know? but yeah, at this point, there's no need to. I mean, you, right. you make your call beforehand, stick to it, you know, yeah. have a plan. There's no it's point deviating from that. Yeah, yep. exactly. Find some consistency here. And I liked what Morgan Riley said earlier today about you know, basically no excuses. We're not. We're back home. We're not talking about time zones or jet lag. It's over. Like we're here. Yeah. We're professionals. We're paid to play. We play tomorrow. And you know, Chicago's a team you should beat. But it'll yeah. be a it'll be a rocking atmosphere, like you know that that building will be packed, and Bedard's going to do what he's going to do. But you saw last night, like they got crushed by an awful Columbus team, like that. They they got what was it eight two or something last night? Seven, like they got three, wasn't it? Yeah, seven, yeah, like yeah. buried, like Chicago. And now Hall's done for the year again. Corey Perry, something's going on there. He's not with the team. I maybe he plays tomorrow, but um, it's the Bedard show, and then everything else. I'm you telling know. you, man, like, I don't know what the hell they want to do there. But with Taylor Hall, you got to go out and get some guys to play with this guy. Like, I don't know who the hell that is, but you don't want Bedard going out there with literally no names. I'm, not no names, but yeah, we know like, what we mean, talked about it before this season where it's like you got to get Taylor Hall to play on his line. He's hurt. Get somebody else. Like, you got yeah. you got to get somebody, man. Yeah, you need you need top-line talent. Like, they've got guys who are depth players in the NHL. Yeah, Legit and I NHL think it's players, okay but. for kind of when you have the Bedard situation where you're almost circling like a shark on really bad teams as well, although you're a bad team too, just to get a guy to play with them. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, that's right. And yet it's tough to do at this point because you're into the season now, right? You're 20 games into a year. Or you might have to wait until the trade deadline where guys are going to go out, you know. know. But yeah, come right. the off season, you know. But like don't you, would you think- guys think there's bad enough teams? Like there, there, there just seems like a lot of negativity. There seems like five to seven teams that need a blockbuster to shake things up. Yes. Yeah. You're you're right that if this if this was what was kind of percolating around the league 30, 40 years ago, there would be there would be trades man. that yep. would be going through because yeah, I, I would say outside of Boston, probably the Rangers, Dallas, Vegas, Vancouver, maybe LA. You know, and maybe you know, maybe you mix Colorado in there, a couple other teams, Florida. Everyone else is either just okay <laughs> yeah. or furious. You know yes. what I mean? Like, <laughs> well, there's, you're, a you're right. furious, yeah, there's, there's a, a lot, lot of furious, man. There's a lot of furious. There's probably like, out of thirty two, would there be ten teams that are furious? Yes. 
probably a good a good dime of, of like fears. who had Jersey being furious? I didn't. Right, that's no. it. Like I, I think Buffalo's Edmonton furious. Is Ottawa is beyond furious. Edmonton, yeah. Jersey's furious. Pittsburgh's not happy. Like they're a five hundred club right now. They're they're not happy. Um, well, even Nashville, Calgary, Minnesota. Calgary, Calgary had a chance to go to to five hundred last night. They lost. Mm-hmm. Now they're seven and nine. Like Calgary, you can't be happy. Edmonton. You know, <laughs> you know, you can't be happy. Minnesota's furious. Minnesota, like that's like legit fuming. Like Dean Evans, <laughs> uh, Dean Evanson at his worst. He, like he's got the best reaction behind the bench. <laughs> Faces are, like even like yeah, they could be winning and he still's got that that vein yeah. beside a his bad head. Bad offside that's call up. or something. He just yeah. wants to jump on the ice and pummel somebody. Yeah, there but. there is a hand. There's a handful of teams. But think of it this way: if you're dealing from a position of strength, say you're Vancouver, and you want to add some depth, why wouldn't you be looking at it sooner than later? Because it's like, okay, if we we need, if we feel we need a defenseman or you know another forward to add, if you're dealing from a position of strength, you're not going to be paying a king's ransom. You you could throw it an offer if it sticks, great. If not, hey, you know what? But like, I would much rather be in that situation where where you're not desperate and you're you know teams know that you're calling because mm-hmm. you need X, Y, and Z. So if your teams you just mentioned at the top feeling good about yourself, you're always going to envision what you. would you know, a wish list. Boy, I like that guy. If it's closer to deadline, why not be a little proactive now? Yeah, the teams I are a little bit more you. desperate. Pro- there you go, because you're just calling, looking to help out. But meanwhile, you know, you're really being sneaky and thinking, I'm trying to improve my team add. right now. Yeah, add. And yeah, yeah. There, there certainly are teams on that end of the spectrum. Like, there, yeah. there's no question about that, where you're well aware of who they are, what they are, and what they're going to continue to be yeah. the rest of the year. Um, All right, Luke Wilson coming up in about 20 minutes. A very impressive win today. Jordan Love, a platform game for him. He was great for the Packers. The Lions lose again today. Jared Goff was (laughs) a mess. (laughs) It it was. That's a coming out game, man. That's how I would define it. We'll see what Luke Wilson can say about that. And more picks still to come where Al's brother will join us. We'll pick the Black Friday game tomorrow, and we'll pick Sunday's slate as well. Fireworks will be in the air in about a half an hour. Bruce Boudreaux still to come, and Richard Griffin coming up. A lot of – talk about rumors, man. Bo Bichette is in the rumor mill right now, and uh, he's not alone. So more on that still to come later this afternoon. Overdrive continues, TSN 1050 online, tsn1050.ca. All right, Luke Wilson coming up in about 15 minutes, and we'll get into some audio from two NBA coaches that simply have got to relax. They've got to relax. We'll play that into the 5 p.m. hour. The Leafs are back in action tomorrow. Big win for the Raptors last night. It was a shootout in Indiana, back-to-back. That's a tough trip, man. Orlando up to the up to Indiana, and they got a win last night. And, like, you talk about the underpants camp. Gary Trent was feeling it, man. He had two free throws to basically close the game. He bricked both, and uh, they got away with it. But that's terrifying. Right? Oh, dude. Terrifying. How many times you've yeah. seen that though? Like all throughout the game, it's just in, 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 and then the game's on the line. It's like I could put this game to bed. And yeah, clanks both, and like he yeah. was all business. He he was trying not to show any emotion. He just got up to the line. He was, but you could tell he's like, I can't believe I'm at the line right now. His numbers at the line this year have been terrible. I think he shoot like fifty five percent or so, which is absolutely inexcusable. I know. Yeah. And, dude, but. I would always say, like, how do you ever miss that? Whenever I had to go to a venue and put my gear on and get on the bus and go to a different rink to practice and the NBA court was down, I would always go grab a ball and just start shooting around. I'm like, I, I can't make anything. Mm-hmm. Like, even that shot, it's just never, ever. Yeah. and But for the- them, it's their job, and it's like, Second you have to fiddle, do it. but yeah, yeah, of you, you've got to hit free throws. You you have to hit free throws. It's like six foot putts, you know. Like yeah, you, you've, you if you're on tour, you got to hit those. If you miss them, that's on you, man. Yes, the average exactly. person will miss them, but um, yeah, you got to hit free throws. Yet you know the the Raptors found a way, and and usually when it happens, it's because Siakam has a big night or Scotty Barnes or OG Ananobi. It's a three man <laughs> band right now, but. You know, yeah. they got themselves a win last night. That was a significant comeback. And credit to them. And a little bit of a different rotation Darko using in terms of his bench. And they're they're still working some things through. They're not going to be a great team, but um, it's a long season. 
So Raptors with a win last night. More on that later this afternoon. We'll get into the Popovich commentary, not only during the game, but I thought it was almost as ludicrous what he said after the game. (laughs) Heroic. Just heroic. And Steve Kerr, not far behind him. I don't know if you saw what Kerr was up to last night. Yeah, I saw that. Yes, we'll get to that as well. (laughs) Uh, Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 and on the TSN app.